All right, so uh, finally we can look at muscle fatigue. So muscle fatigue is just a decline in the maximal capacity for force production. And it can be caused by any impairment on the pathway of force production that we, uh, we talked about before. So uh, we can look at this in terms of uh, central fatigue and peripheral fatigue. So again, anywhere along that pathway of force production, starting from the brain, working all the way down to the molecular side of muscle, there can be a cause of fatigue. So first on the central side, there's changes in excitability or inhibition. Uh, and then also recruitment and motor unit discharge rate can be altered by fatigue. So I don't know if you guys talked about this in, in lecture yet, but uh, a decline in recruitment. A recruitment is you know how many fibers you uh, recruit or how many fibers you use when you try to produce force. So you can imagine if you're trying to produce a lot of force, you're going to recruit a lot of muscle fibers. Uh, and this recruitment actually goes down during fatigue. Uh, and then another thing that will change is the motor unit discharge rate. So the keyword in there is, is a rate. It's how often your fibers get excited, how often there's an action potential that reaches down and excites your muscle fibers. Uh, and this rate actually slows down during fatigue, so you're not going to get as much excite, uh, excitation and not as much force. Uh, now, on the other side, with peripheral fatigue, there's uh, a few causes. The one, or the most common, or the hottest topic right now is this EC coupling, or excitation contraction coupling. And it has to deal with, you know, the calcium being released from the sarcoplasmic reticulum. Uh, so the excitation of the muscle fiber and then the calcium release, that's kind of where the excitation contraction coupling uh, is, is looked at, and it's a very hot topic right now. But another thing that... Uh, that can occur on the peripheral side is this uh, the cross bridge mechanics. So you have calcium levels that can change, right? You can imagine that um, when your muscle gets excited, all this calcium is released from your sarcoplasmic reticulum, and that's important for uh, activating the, the muscle fiber uh, with troponin and tropomyosin moving out of the way. But if uh, the calcium starts to go back into the sarcoplasmic reticulum, uh, which happens during fatigue, then we're going to have less calcium uh, near the, the thin filaments. So if we have less calcium, then uh, not all the myosin heads will be able to bind to the actin filaments. Right? If we have less calcium, not all the troponin and tropomyosin molecules will move out of the way, uh, and now not all the active sites on actin are going to be available for myosin to bind to and to produce force or velocity. Uh, so that's one mechanism of fatigue on the peripheral side. Another thing is just the metabolites in the cytosol. So some common metabolites are uh, hydrogen ions, which reduce the pH, uh, and phosphate, uh, which is caused when ATP is broken down. Right. So ATP, when it's used, gets broken down to ADP and phosphate, uh, and these phosphate molecules can cause fatigue. Uh, so again, uh, especially on the molecular side, there are metabolites that can be uh, altered in cause fatigue. So as I said before, the high phosphate molecules uh, and the low pH reduce calcium. These can all cause fatigue. And actually, that's what uh, my lab, you know, with, I work with Dr. DeBolt. This is what we look at. We look at uh, the high pH, or I'm sorry, the high pi and the low pH and how these ions uh, affect myosin's function on the molecular level. We're still trying to figure out exactly what these ions do that alters myosin's function. All right, so for the method section, uh, finally getting into what we're going to be doing today, uh, take note of the method section because this is a long-form lab report, uh, so make sure that you, you take notes and uh, you're able to write a good method section for the lab report. Uh, we're going to split it into groups, and you're going to have a few people from each group uh, be the subjects. Uh, the subject will grab the hand dynamometer, which is something you just squeeze, and you can measure how much force uh, the person is producing based on uh, their hand grip. Uh, you're going to produce three to four baseline MVCs, or maximal voluntary contractions. So you're going to squeeze, the subject will squeeze the hand dynamometer as hard as they can for about four seconds, and we're going to see how much force they can produce uh, at their maximal level. Uh, so they're going to squeeze it for four seconds, and then they're going to rest for two minutes. We're going to do this uh, three to four times, just so we have a good baseline of their maximal uh, force production. And then we're actually going to start the two-minute muscle fatigue protocol, so it's going to be 12 contractions that are 7 seconds long, and then you only get a 3-second rest. So you're going to squeeze for 7 seconds, rest for 3 seconds, 
squeeze for seven seconds, and then rest for three seconds. That's going to continue for two minutes. And each squeeze is supposed to be at 100% effort. All right, so, and we're going to see uh, how much fatigue there is over these uh, over these two minutes. Uh, and then finally, we're going to have a recovery phase. So we're going to do some uh, interspersed uh, multiple or uh, maximal voluntary contractions at 0 seconds, 30 seconds, 60 seconds, 120 seconds, and 240 seconds. So uh, we're going to watch if the uh, MVCs recover over time after this fatigue protocol. And in the past, we've seen that after about 240 seconds, the person has fully recovered from the fatigue protocol and is able to produce uh, their maximal uh, force. Uh, and so we have a little video of, of me actually doing the uh, the test for a minute. I mean, you guys can actually see what it looks like. Before we get started, uh, I'm going to do the fatigue protocol. I've just done a couple of MVCs, maximal voluntary contractions. Uh, and now we're going to go through the fatigue protocol to let you see what that looks like. So it's going to be 12 contractions, 7 seconds of actually doing the contraction, uh, and then I only get 3 seconds rest, and then another 7 second contraction. I do that for 2 minutes. So Jacob here has the time, uh, and we're going to record on BioPack all my contractions, and we're going to kind of watch uh, my, fati my fatigue over two minutes. So Jacob, are you ready? I'm going to give you a three, two, one, go countdown. All right. All right. So three, two, one, go. Squeeze, 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 squeeze. Hard as you can, hard as you can. Keep squeezing, keep squeezing. Squeeze, 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 squeeze. Keep squeezing, keep squeezing, and relax. Squeeze, 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 squeeze. As hard as you can. Come on, Thomas, keep going. Squeeze, 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 squeeze. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Stop. Go, 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 go. Squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. As hard as you can, as hard as you can. Keep squeezing, keep squeezing. Stop. Squeeze, 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 squeeze. Keep going, Thomas. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Go, 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 go. Stop. On again, squeeze, 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 squeeze. Keep going, Thomas, keep going, keep going. Get it up there, get it up there, stop. Go, 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 go. Get up my finger, get up my finger. Squeeze, 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 squeeze. Stop. Go, 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 go. Squeeze, Thomas, squeeze. Squeeze, Thomas, keep going, keep going. Stop. I just stop this now. <laughs> no, keep going. Alright, so this is a long form lab report. Uh, there's going to be an introduction, methods, results, and discussion. So, the introduction uh, a couple of things that I would include is the pathway of force production, the kinds of fatigue, causes of fatigue, uh, and then maybe talk about fiber type and muscle size uh, and how these affect uh, force production. And then methods, again, I just write repeatability. Try to write your method section so someone can read it and be able to repeat the experiment. Uh, and don't write these in bullet points. Put them in uh, a nice paragraph. Uh, and then the re results and the discussion section is going to be as usual. So results will be some calculations. And the discussion uh, will be some discussion questions that we give you. 